Hello everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Willamette University Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony, honoring the outstanding contribution and tradition of the Bearcat Intercollegiate Athletic Program. It is the intent of the Hall of Fame to honor and preserve the memory of those student athletes, teams, coaches, and others whose achievements have brought recognition and distinction to Willamette University and its athletic program. My name is Rob Passage, Director of Intercollegiate Athletics at Willamette, and I am here in the Sparks Athletic Center in front of our Hall of Fame display to welcome five student athletes and one team into this distinguished company. We were hoping to do this back in person in September, but as with many of our plans in 2020, precautions around COVID-19 have led us to create this pre-recorded program. We do hope to be able to gather together again soon and enjoy each other's company in celebration of these outstanding achievements. For now, please sit back and relax and join me in celebrating these outstanding Bearcats. Our first inductee is Maddie Kaufman, a cross country and track and field student athlete from the class of 2009. Maddie was an all conference and all American performer in both cross country and track and field during her career. She also won individual titles in cross country and track and field and helped her team to team championships in both sports while she was a Bearcat. To present Maddie for induction, please welcome Matt McGuirk. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Maddie on her induction into the Willamette University Hall of Fame. Um, Maddie was one of the best runners in the Northwest coming out of high school. She also played in the orchestra and had a nearly perfect SAT score. So we should all feel very fortunate at Willamette that she chose to attend here. Uh, she came in when we had some pretty good national ranked teams that were uh, usually winning the region and the conference and going to nationals every year. She immediately put herself in this top five scoring position on our team, uh, made it to nationals with the team as a freshman in track. She won the conference steeplechase and then promptly asked me to never run that race again. So uh, we we uh, we uh, were happy to do that as she was very good at every other event she ran as well. Uh, sophomore year, she made it to nationals again in cross country and was our third runner, I believe, on a top team. I think uh, at that time, 24 teams made it to nationals out of 450 Division three schools that sponsored cross country. So uh, very, very um, impressive to make it to nationals. And then in track, she was ninth in the 1500. Only 15 to 20 people make it in each event. Ninth at the national meet, one spot from All-American. Uh, her junior year, she came out and was a whole different runner on a different level, and she placed 11th at Nationals um, and then studied abroad in Paris, which is a nice a nice benefit of a D Division III um, athletic student-athlete opportunity, um, and she took advantage of that and, and uh, was not in the States during that year. Uh, then her senior year, she came in was one of the top ranked runners in the nation and uh, she won the conference meet. She won the West regional meet and then she got fourth at the national meet. And then again in track, she was uh, one of the top runners in the nation and she placed fourth in the 1500 at the national meet. At the time it was a Willamette school record. Um, her 5k time on the track uh, after she uh, opted out of the steeplechase, she became uh, quite adept at the 1500 and 5,000 meters. Her 5K time is the number five time ever in the Northwest Conference, which dates back almost 50 years, back to when it was an NAIA conference with athletic scholarships. So uh, the four people in front of her have all either won a national title or been runner-up at a national championship. And then she was also ninth all-time um, she is now, and she was higher than that at the time, but ninth all time on the Northwest Conference uh, 1500 list. So one of the best uh, the conference in the region has ever seen. Um, she happened to go to Willamette where we've had a lot of a lot of really good people as well uh, before and after her. But she certainly stood out as one of the top runners in the nation and uh, absolutely is deserving of this honor. So again, Maddie, congratulations. And uh, we only wish we could we could see you in person, but but someday soon. Hi, 
I am Maddie Lima, and I just want to say thank you uh, for this honor. It is not something that I uh, had ever expected, uh, but I'm very proud. And um, I just want to say that running on the cross country and track teams was so much more than just an athletic pursuit for me. Uh, these teams really formed the foundation of my community during my time at Willamette. Uh, it was the source of some of my closest and dearest friendships to this day. Um, the long bus rides to meets, the the Sunday long runs followed by waffles every week. <laughs> uh, you know, the, um, the spaghetti dinners that we would host all together uh, before meets really um, just created a family for us during that time and um, is something that I am always grateful for and the friendships that I made during that time, um, the, the coaching that we got from, from Matt, from Chris, from Brett, uh, it really was an amazing experience. And I was always proud to go out and compete as a bear cat and, uh, it was just a, a really great experience for me and something that I uh, really treasured. Uh, and again, it was um, just the source of some of my very best friends. And it's something that I'm always grateful for and something that I uh, hope to bring my family uh, back to Willamette, hopefully next year <laughs> to see. Uh, and I just want to say thank you again so much for this honor and uh, go Bearcats. We'd now like to recognize Katie Edmonds, a standout soccer student athlete from the class of 2000. Katie led her team to four consecutive conference championships and multiple national tournament appearances, which earned her Conference Player of the Year, All-American, and All-Tournament honors during her career. To present Katie for induction, please welcome John Bullock. Hi, my name is John Bullock, and I'm a proud graduate of Willamette University. It is my absolute pleasure to offer a few words about my dear friend, Katie Hartman, upon her induction into the Willamette University Athletic Hall of Fame. Katie is richly deserving of this honor. As a coach, one of my favorite opportunities was serving as the assistant coach of Willamette University's nationally ranked women's soccer team in the early 90s. And while I did not coach Katie in her time as a Bearcat, I did coach her as a high school club player, and I encouraged her to choose Willamette University as the place to pursue her education and to continue her athletic career. And I'm so happy that she did. Katie played on four conference championship teams for the Bearcats in women's soccer from 1996 to 1999. She helped Willamette reach postseason play all four years with an overall record of 76 wins, nine losses, and nine draws, and a 54-1-5 record in conference play. She was named to the NCAA Division III Final Four All-Tournament team in 1998. She helped Willamette reach the NAIA Nationals in 1996 and the NCAA Final Four in 1998 as the team qualified for all four postseason berths during her time. She was selected as the NWC Player of the Year and NCAA Division III All-American in 1999. And as if her soccer accomplishments were not enough, Katie also played basketball at Willamette. She ranks third with a 471 season three-point shooting percentage and is sixth with 139 career steals. Katie was not just a talented athlete. She approached her athletic career with an unbridled tenacity. She was a fierce competitor and an incredible teammate. She worked diligently to make herself and those around her better. And she was always a player upon which her coaches and teammates could count to bring her best effort. Clearly, 
Katie's athletic performance at Willamette University is worthy of induction into the Hall of Fame. Those accomplishments, however, only reveal a part of Katie's contribution to athletics and to her community. Willamette University's motto, not unto ourselves are we born, encourages us all to lead lives of achievement, contribution, and meaning. Katie has done just that as a high school soccer coach. She has three times been named as the Three Rivers League Coach of the Year, and she was named the OSAA Coach of the Year after her team won the Oregon State Championship in 2016. And the National Federation of High Schools named her the Sectional Coach of the Year for the 2017-18 school year. While I am so proud of all Katie has accomplished as an athlete, and as a coach. It is Katie as a person of whom I am most proud. Throughout my career as an educator and as a coach, I've been blessed to meet, to coach, and to work with many incredible individuals. Katie ranks at the top of that list. I hold her in such high regard that I named my daughter Katie in part because I hope she might grow up to have the tenacity, resiliency, and compassion I see in my friend Katie Hartman. Katie, congratulations on your induction into the Willamette University Hall of Fame. You are so deserving, and you're such a wonderful person. Thanks for all you give to our school and our community and to the world. Thanks for being awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, John, for introducing me and for your encouragement and support um, over my life. I've really appreciated it. Congratulations to all of the other 2020 inductees. And thank you to Willamette for um, this honor and all the memories. I thoroughly enjoyed my time, both academically and athletically at Willamette. I need to say thank you to all of the coaches I've had over my athletic career. I've had coaches that have not only encouraged me, but also challenged me to be the best version of myself. I also wouldn't be here um, without the amazing teammates that I had the opportunity to play with. I played with some really talented and fiercely competitive women, and the memories I have from those playing days are ones that I cherish um, and they make me smile when I think back on them. Um, and I really enjoy the lessons and conversations that I got to have with all of my teammates. Lastly, but not least, I would like to thank my family to my four siblings. Thank you for your constant encouragement. Um, thank you for being some of the best training partners. Thank you for keeping me humble and honest. And also, as much as we might fight with each other, I know that you would always fight for me. And to know that is a true gift. And last, but definitely not least, thank you to my parents. Um, to have your support and encouragement over the years have been something that I truly cherish the multiple rainy games that you would sit through or the stuffy gyms um, and never once complained. You taught me that hard work and integrity matter. And through all of the wins and losses and the injuries and the tough conversations with coaches and teammates, you were there to always listen, but to always remind me to find the joy that why am I playing if it's not fun and not, and not joyful? So for that, I am truly thankful. That's the greatest gift. And I share this honor with anyone that has encouraged me and supported me throughout my life and athletic endeavor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our next inductee is Nikki Franchi, a softball student athlete and member of the class of 2009. A multiple year All-American and the Northwest Conference Player of the Year, Nikki excelled both as a batter and a pitcher for the Bearcats. To present Nikki for induction, please welcome Damian Williams. Hello Bearcats. It's my honor to introduce Nikki into the Willamette Athletics Hall of Fame. Nikki was such a fierce competitor 
a great captain, a good leader, but even a better teammate. She demanded excellence from everybody around her, me, her friends, her roommates, but most importantly, her teammates. And everybody was up for the challenge because Nikki was up for the challenge. It didn't matter. When you have your best player doing all they can and not taking any credit for it, that's the best leader you can have. And that was definitely Nikki. She never wanted to be interviewed afterwards. She never wanted to take all the credit. She just wanted to play softball. And that's what you want out of your leaders to show the younger kids and and her peers what leadership was all about. The best thing about her was how she rose to the top um, against the best competition. There's two stories I'd like to share with you. One, we were down in Los Angeles playing in a a great tournament, and we were playing Cal State Hayward, um, who was ranked at the time. When Nikki got out to an 8-0 lead in the second inning, and we were looking to shut it down early, so we pulled Nikki um, because we wanted to save her. Um, We put in another young lady to pitch, and we gave up four runs. Um, Immediately in that inning, we put Nikki back in. She locked it down, hit a three-run home run um, to have us go up to 12 uh, to four so that we can still finish it in five, and that was against the ranked team. She always rose to the occasion. But the best story is what she did at Linfield the last day of the season um, against the number one ranked team in the country. We were ranked third and had to win on their home field to have any shot at the postseason. Well, Nikki throws a two-hitter and hits a two-run home run for us to win two to two to zero. Um, so she shut them out on their home field, the number one team in the country. She left it all out on the field. There was nobody better than her. And, and it's hard to say I've seen anybody at any level play with her kind of intensity. She deserved every award that she earned. She was player of the year. She was two-time All-American. She was all-conference, all-region, and she holds a lot of the Willamette records. She is a fierce, fierce competitor, and I love that about her. Even in games, in our hotel rooms, one one, uh, year they taught me how to play um, Settlers of Catan, and Nikki wanted to win that even though they were just teaching me how to play. She was always, always trying to come out on top. And you just love that. You want to be around people who want to make you better. And that is Nikki. And that's why I'm honored that she is um, being inducted to Willamette Athletics Hall of Fame. Nikki, we're all proud of you. We all love you. And we're all thankful that we have you in our life. Congratulations and best of luck. We love you. First, I want to say thank you to Willamette University Athletics. I'm truly honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. It was always a dream of mine to play college softball, and I feel blessed that I got that opportunity at Willamette. There are so many people that I would like to thank. Uh, First and foremost, my parents uh, for all the support they gave me when I first started playing, um, driving me up to all those tournaments and showcases so that I could be seen by college coaches. Thank you for always being in the stands or behind the center field fence, uh, cheering me on during my games um, at Willamette. Um, To my mom for being my coach all those years ago and nudging me in the direction of being a pitcher. And thank you for being my catcher. You were there when I threw my first pitch at the age of seven uh, to the last one I threw right before my senior season. Um, I can't thank you both enough for everything that you did to get me to this point, and I'm truly grateful. I wanna say thank you to my coaches, Damian Williams, You recruited me. You got me that second interview, which helped me get accepted into Willamette. Um, You believed in me and the player I was, even though I don't think you ever saw me play. But you continued to express that you wanted me for your program. And that's one of the main reasons why I picked Willamette. Uh, Thank you to Lance Gilligan and all your stern talks with me on the mound. Uh, You did so much for me um, back then when I played for you. And you've done so much more for me ever since I graduated. Um, And thank you to my teammates. Um, Without your support, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have had the career that I had. Um, All my memories from Willamette softball have so much to do with all of you. And I will never forget all the fun times that we had playing um, for Willamette and being a part of Willamette softball. Uh, Once again, I'm honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Um, I never thought when I started playing that I would 
end up getting this honor. Um, thank you to Willamette Athletics and the Hall of Fame Committee. Um, this is an incredible honor and I will cherish it forever. Our next inductee is Gary Johnson, a football student athlete from the class of 1977. Gary was a force at defensive end for the Bearcats during his career and earned all conference honors for three years and was a two-time All-American. To present Gary for induction, please welcome John McCollum. Hello, Willamette Bearcat community. My name is John McCallum, fellow Willamette graduate and former Bearcat football player and I'm honored and blessed to have the privilege to introduce my good friend, Gary Johnson, as he is enshrined into the Bearcat Hall of Fame for his accomplishments on the football field. I would like to start by saying congratulations to everyone, either individual or team, who is making it into the Hall of Fame. It's something to be extremely proud of, and you are joining an illustrious group forever. Having this opportunity to talk about Gary Johnson for this accolade means a lot to me, and I'm grateful to have my name affiliated with his. Gary grew up in Woodburn and played football under local legendary coach Dale Uranick. Gary was known as a hard worker and spirited on many different levels when he was on the football field. During his time there, he was a two-time first-team All-League defensive end, first-team All-State defensive end, and team MVP. Gary stepped onto the Willamette University campus in 1973 and started for the Bearcats from 1973 to 1976. He was named first team All-American in 1975 and 76 after earning first team Little All-Northwest honors in 1974. He was chosen Northwest Conference Lineman of the Week on November 15, 1975. Johnson was named first team All-Northwest Conference in 1974, 75, and 76. He won the J.H. Booth Award at Willamette in 1977 and was signed as a free agent by the Seattle Seahawks. During his Bearcat career, Gary had many remarkable games. Two that are memorable is his huge game against Chico State, where he finished with 12 tackles with four sacks that allowed Willamette to be victorious by the score of 14-9 in, in a defensive battle. However, one of the biggest compliments came from longtime Linfield coach Ad Rutschman. That number 75, talking about Gary, is one fine football player after he continuously pressured their quarterback all game and held him to 30 yards passing in the second half. Former Bearcat Steve Turner had this to say about Gary. GJ came to Willamette as a skinny kid with big hands, wanting to be a great teammate. He left a man playing against boys with a big head slap that is still ringing, ringing some guy's ears, and he is still a great teammate. Gary Johnson is one of the best people I know, and he made a tremendous impact on the football community as both a player and a coach. Football is a fantastic game that teaches work ethic, teamwork, humility, how to overcome adversity, camaraderie, and spiritual growth. Gary embodies all these things. I know this as I had the privilege to coach under his leadership, and he coached both of my sons at Salem Academy to the state championship in 2016. For that, I can never express enough gratitude as he molded them into young men through his coaching and teaching. To them, he is simply Coach Jay. From Kobe, congratulations on making the Hall of Fame, Coach Jay. It is well-deserved. Thank you for everything you have done, putting others before yourself, and helping me become the man I am today. And from Hunter, you taught me things on the field and off the field that I will never forget. Congratulations on getting the Hall of Fame. You deserve it. Coach Jay also won a state girls basketball championship at Cascade High School in 1984-85 season. Proverbs 22.6 says, To train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Coach Jay's mentorship to people is unmatched. Gary is also a tremendous leader to his family. To Connie and his outstanding young daughters, today is a day they celebrate alongside of him and his accomplishments. I know they are proud of him, just like he is proud of being a husband and father to them. Coach Jay, I thank you, your teammates thank you, your players thank you, your family thanks you, and the Willamette University community thanks you. Your excellence on and off the field, your guidance spiritually, emotionally, 
mentally and physically will live on forever and all those that had a ch chance to play with you and for you. Ladies and gentlemen of the Willamette Bearcat community, it is with overwhelming pride and honor that I, I get to introduce a legend as he makes his way into the folklore to, of the Willamette University Hall of Fame, Mr. Gary Johnson, Coach J, class of 1977, and forever Bearcat football player and coach to many. Hello, I am both honored and flattered to be inducted into the Willamette Athletic Hall of Fame. I must admit that it is equally humbling for a small town country boy. I personally never thought that a day would come when I would become part of such a prestigious hall. When I look at the accomplishments of the body of members previously inducted, they are truly outstanding people. They are people not only rich on their, for their on-field accomplishments, but rich in character. My parents began raising our family of six on a farm east of Woodburn where we grew and harvested wheat and corn crops. Mom and dad taught us that faith, family, and hard work were the most important things in life. Dad worked two jobs and he was it was important for us kids to help around the farm. Working side by side with dad and accomplishing difficult tasks strengthened my own character. My relationship with my Lord and Savior further provided building blocks for everything that I have done. I want to thank Willamette University for taking a chance on a young, small town kid. When I showed up on campus in the summer of 1973 with 55 other incoming freshman football players, I had no idea what was in store for me academically or athletically. I want to thank my professors for instilling in me a desire to learn more every day and challenging me to be the best I could be. I am grateful to have had coaches who did the same ones who love their players. They lived this out both on and off the field. I want to thank Dale Uranick, Joe Sheffield, Tommy Lee, Bill Trenbeth, and Vern Petrick. These coaches provided the tools for success and inspiration for me to reach for the stars. They mentored me and showed me the importance of building relationships. I am forever indebted. As I reminisce about my time at Willamette, memories come flooding back to me about my teammates, who were all exceptional in their own rights. Because of that, I recognize that being inducted into the Hall of Fame is as much a team award as individual. I want to thank them all, but especially Lloyd Shimabuku, Greg Bean, Ken Slack, and Steve Turner, the guys in the trenches who were committed to work hard every day. I share this award with them as they helped achieve it as much as I. I began my teaching and coaching career at Willamette as a graduate assistant while substitute teaching. I want to thank Tommy Lee, Vern Petrick for believing in me and giving me the chance to do so. I was blessed to work for the, and under the tutelage of some of the best high school coaches in the state of Oregon, men of faith who coached with integrity, class, and competence. They taught that success is measured by more than wins and losses. They modeled a winning lifestyle. They built teams around the family and a family around the team. I recognize their influence on me. These people are Dave Powell, Craig Rooker, Carl Elliott, Steve Turner, Mark Neffendorf, and Bill Crumley. It has been said that you're only as good as your weakest link, and therefore it comes without saying that as a good head coach needs a, to have great assistance. As a head coach, I have had some of the best assistant coaches you could find. The best assistant coach I ever had is my wife of 32 years, Connie. She has been there with me every step of the way. On and off the field, without her support, any success would be hollow. I love you, Connie. Thank you for your commitment, sacrifice, and loyalty, and helping build a football family. I also want to acknowledge the men who are dedicated and supported my philosophy. They truly are the kind of assistants that any head coach would love to have, they were the backbone of the successes we had on the field. Thank you, Troy Walker, John McCallum, Chris Rudder, Rex Michelli, and Claxon Fernandez. I love you guys. I will be forever grateful and humbled by this induction. I wanna thank the Hall of Fame committee, my family, and the many people who have shaped and impacted my life because they truly share in this honor. 
Once again, I want to thank Willamette University for the outstanding education that allowed me to become the teacher, coach, mentor I have become. God bless you all. Our next inductee is Kyle Stalker, a baseball student athlete and a member of the class of 2009. A Northwest Conference Player of the Year and All-American performer, Kyle still finds his name on many pages across the baseball record books. Presenting Kyle for induction, please welcome Emilio Solano. Hello to everyone tuning in to the Willamette Athletic Hall of Fame Ceremony of 2020. My name is Emilio Solano, and I can't tell you all how much of an honor it is to have been asked by Kyle Stalker to induct him today. Kyle is not only the greatest hitter that I had ever had the pleasure of playing with, He's also one of the best leaders and friends I have ever known. His accomplishments during his four years at Willamette playing first base are undeniable. When he graduated in 2009, Kyle set Willamette career baseball records with 51 home runs, 161 RBIs, and a 722 slugging percentage. Being witness to not only these games, but also daily batting practice made any player on our team feel like we had our own cheat code. When Kyle stepped to the plate, practice seemed to stop. Bullpens being thrown paused. Those shagging balls in the outfield prepared to see a lot of action and pitchers who were in charge of running down foul balls moved themselves behind the outfield fence. The sound of the ball hitting Kyle's bat echoed and it was common that he would place a home run ball into the small forest of trees in Bush Park that lined the outfield. There were games when what we were witnessing seemed far too ridiculous. I recall a stretch of five games at the start of our season in 2008 when Kyle blasted seven home runs and drove in 16 runs. In one of those games against Lewis and Clark, he hit three home runs, including a grand slam. Numbers tell the story, but to truly appreciate just how good he was, you had to be there in person. There were times when he would hit a ball so far that our entire dugout didn't know what to do besides bust out laughing. Personally, I always loved watching Coach Allison's reactions to his home runs. He would usually mutter something to himself that only he could understand, shake his head in disbelief, and smile. Kyle was the Northwest Conference Player of the Year that season, as he hit 22 home runs and had 63 RBIs. He did this in 39 games. Our former teammate Jimmy Moyle will appreciate this, but if we played 162 games like they do in the majors, Kyle would have been on pace for 91 home runs destroying Barry Bonds' single-season record of 73. And since Barry Bonds can't find a way to get into Cooperstown yet, I think it is only fair that we acknowledge Kyle as the true home run king. I almost wasn't fortunate enough to, to witness all of this. During our freshman year, I wasn't playing baseball. So Kyle and I actually met while joining the Sigma Chi fraternity, along with a good number of baseball players. Part of the reason I considered joining a fraternity in the first place is because that year was the first time in 13 years that I hadn't played organized baseball, and I was missing those relationships that are forged on a team. In the first couple of weeks of our sophomore year, Kyle and some of the other guys were organizing batting practice for the team and convinced me to join. As we wrapped up and headed home, I remember Kyle telling me that I needed to come out for fall ball and try out for the team. And that was really the start of our friendship with him becoming a cheerleader for me in that moment and a teammate for the next two and a half seasons. So Kyle, I know you were not the only one of our friends telling me to play at Willamette, but if I haven't told you this before, thank you for being the voice that I remember the most. My experience at Willamette was changed forever because of you pushing me. And I will always remember rushing to Gowdy at the end of practice to make sure we were able to eat before they closed and then heading to the library after we showered to start our homework. During fall ball, our senior year, we spent what felt like every Monday through Thursday night together in the library, working on our thesis, knowing that we had to hold each other accountable both on and off the field. True student athletes. For all of us that know Kyle best, this is not an uncommon story. He was a cheerleader to many. He excelled in the classroom and he was a leader on our team and as a member of our campus community. He held himself to a high standard and he wanted those around him to do the same, which showed up both on the field and off of it. 
Because of this, I don't know anyone at Willamette, be that student, staff, or faculty, that didn't have the utmost respect for Kyle. And that is who this Hall of Fame is getting today. They are getting a legendary athlete who was once heckled at Menlo College by students, either in awe of or making fun of how large his calf muscles were. They are getting our captain on the field, a two-time All-American. And they are getting someone whose friendship left its mark on so many at Willamette. He is an alumnus that this university can be proud of for many reasons. So on behalf of everyone that knows you and everyone that had the honor of playing with you, congratulations, Kyle. We love you, and there is no one more deserving of this than you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking a couple hours out of your Sunday to celebrate with us tonight. I don't want to bore you with a bunch of thank yous, but I do need to thank my family, teammates, coaches, and the Willamette community for making this great honor possible. I could not have achieved this without every single one of you. And special shout out to the Willamette training staff for lathering up my hamstrings and super glue and duct tape every day to keep me on the field. When I think back of my time at Willamette, it's hard for me to pinpoint any specific things that made my Willamette experience special, but it was really the product of a tight-knit, quirky community that provided endless support, learning, and fun. And, since I have a captive audience here, I'd love to tell you about some of the fun memories that stand out to me. I think there's no better lesson than an impromptu sing-along to Aerosmith's I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. We had just finished a rough weekend series in the Bay Area, and were taking the bus overnight up the coast back to campus. We watched Armageddon on the ride, and the mood on the bus was downright dark. After 90 minutes of silence, the movie ended, and the credits began. As Steven Tyler's voice filled the bus, it was soon joined by another voice then another, and soon the whole team was busting out the chorus at the top of their lungs. It brought us out of our funk and helped us realize that there was more to life than just losing a few games. We were reminded that we needed to learn from our failures, but afterwards it was just time to get on back on the bus and sing. Willamette is a place that offers endless challenges and resources. A place where you can take your learning, whether it be on the field, in the classroom, or in the community, to whatever heights you choose. Through the influence of the Willamette coaching staff, I was given the opportunity to play ball for the Corvallis Knights, and win a ring at the highest collegiate level alongside a team full of future major leaguers, some of which are even still in the bigs to this day. It was a life-changing experience and a privilege, and one I would have not have gotten anywhere else. I'm so proud of what the baseball program at Willamette has become and really impressed by what Coach Swick and the rest of the coaching staff and student-athletes have accomplished. When I was playing, we were only on the verge of breaking through despite having one of the most potent offenses in the West region, if not the country. And since then, this program has has worked its way towards being the class of the conference, an achievement almost unthinkable during my playing days, due to some of the powerhouses in the conference. While we definitely had some weaknesses, our offense was so notorious that other teams were convinced that we were cheating. I recall a game at UPS where a bat shattered upon impact, and their coach came tearing out of the dugout to inspect the bat, sure he had finally had his opportunity to catch us in the act. But he, of course, was disappointed when he saw there was nothing to be found. I do have one confession to make, however. Remember that one time that someone left a tube of red chapstick in their pants going through the laundry, causing pink stains over the white unis on game day? Yeah, that one was me. But that day the team lit the field on fire without the knowledge or approval of the coaches in an attempt to dry it out in time for practice? That idea wasn't mine. Thankfully, no real harm was done outside of the yellow, the yellow hue that home plate seemed to have permanently taken on. But in all seriousness, it's hard for me to imagine a better place for me to learn, play, and compete than at Willamette. Everyone from the faculty, staff, administration, coaches, students, and community create a college experience unique from any other. I truly believe that there's no better group of peers that I could have found, and I'm so glad to have been given that opportunity. So thank you everyone for logging on tonight, and I hope to celebrate with all of you in person soon. Our final induction is for a team of intrepid students who in 1967 and 68 established the first soccer team on campus with the help, support, and creativity of an instructor of earth sciences, Coach Al Bergwin, and the manager of Willamette's Health Center, head nurse Henrietta Hank Altoff. The team was created without any immediate support from the athletic department, which forced the students to organize themselves, fund the team, find a place to practice and play, and find teams to play. 
in order for soccer to have its start here at Willamette. Now over 50 years later, coming off some of the most successful seasons in program history, we would like to recognize the team for their efforts to start it all back in 1967. Please welcome a member of that team, Mike Bennett, who will be the first of a few team members to speak. Hi, I'm Mike Bennett, class of 70. In 1967, Willamette had nine intercollegiate sports, football, basketball, baseball, track, cross country, golf, tennis, swimming, and wrestling, most of which were coached by a combination of football and basketball coaches and a few faculty members. There was no Sparks Athletic Center, although we did have Les Sparks himself then, uh, but only a small gym, now the Pelton Theater, with a dark basement and a few free weights rolling around, and McCulloch Stadium and a baseball field in Bush Pasture Park. As you will hear, when a couple of students, freshmen Steve Rapp and Roy Hartzell, expressed an interest in starting a soccer team at Willamette, it wasn't exactly embraced by the university. With no budget, no facilities, and no soccer history in 1967-68, intercollegiate soccer at Willamette turned out to be somewhat of a miracle. This induction is unique. No other Willamette team was started or founded by students. Uh, other Willamette athletic teams started with games and practices uh, on campus athletic fields utilized campus facilities, and had the full support and commitment of Willamette's athletic department. Not so for Willamette soccer in 1967-68. For 53 straight years since our founding team, Willamette has fielded a varsity soccer team. Actually, for the past four decades or so, Willamette has fielded two soccer teams with the establishment of the women's team in the early 1980s. Uh, none of us thought we were doing anything historic, but almost a lifetime later, I know all of us enjoyed the experience and are all proud that 53 years later, the soccer program continues strong and unbroken. We are grateful to the Willamette Athletic Department and Athletic Director Rob Passage for pulling this event together uh, at a time with such unusual challenges. And we are grateful to the Hall of Fame Selection Committee and the Willamette University Alumni Office for recognizing the unique set of qualifiers for our team's selection to the Hall of Fame. Please know we are honored. I'm pleased now to turn the comments over to three of the key people without whom Willamette soccer would not have happened back then. Steve Rapp, class of 70, one of the key student founders, along with Steve Garish, class of 70, and then Al Berglund, Willamette's first soccer coach. Thanks very much. I pass it on to Steve Rapp. Well, let's see, how did this get started? 1966, when I first came to Willamette, I, a few days after getting there, I ran into Roy Hartzell, Roy and I had been high school teammates in California. Once we got to Willamette, of course, there was no soccer, and both he and I had a strong desire to play. We both had our shoot football, sho our soccer shoes with us, and uh, so we decided to go out for freshman football. And while playing football, we ran into and met some of the guys from Hawaii who had play who had also played soccer in high school. Mike Shim is one of the guys I remember from that. Anyway, after that, we decided we wanted to see if there was any way to get a team or a club started. And I uh, don't remember whose idea this was, whether mine or Roy's or where it kind of came from. But we went to see John Lewis to ask if there was any way to start a soccer program, something like that. I don't remember the details. And uh, John Lewis, the athletic director, told us that we would need a faculty sponsor or coach. And it happened that Roy was taking geology from Al Berglund at that time and Al, who had played soccer at University of Redlands, uh, happily and readily agreed to be our coach. 
So from there, the rest is history. Um, and I just would say that after we got this thing going, uh, I think both Roy and I just wanted to play. We didn't uh, have that much uh, to do beyond that. It was really Mike Bennett, Tom Angelo, Steve Garish, and Coach Berglund who got this thing going and kept it going and made it into what it was over the last, over those four years and then ultimately what it has become over the last 50 years. I, for myself, continued to play soccer after graduating for another 60 years, and uh, or not 60 years, well into my 60s. And just uh, all the teams that I played on, all the players I played with, I just uh, never bonded with or enjoyed playing with guys that, like I did those original men that I just mentioned, the founders. And those feelings are still just as strong now as they were then. I want to say a, pay a special tribute to Tom Angelo, who we all know deserves so much credit for the growth of the program, the start, the growth, and first of all, getting us our varsity letters back in the 1990s and uh, this making this happen today, even though he's not here for that. So special tribute from all of us to Tom. So now uh, after 50 some years, I'm as I did back then, I'm gonna pass the ball to Steve Garish, who was always out there on the wing, ready to take a good pass and score. Hi, I'm Steve Garish. Thanks Mike and Steve for your comments. The origin story of the Willamette 1967-68 soccer team exists somewhere in myth, memory, and history. There's very little history because no one was watching us, and there's really no recorded history other than what we remember. It started in the spring of 1967, and I'm going to refer to my notes as I go on here, so pardon me. We were freshmen. Some of us had played in high school. Some of us hadn't played at all. And the word spread by word of mouth between Matthews Hall, where Roy Hartzell, Mike, and Steve lived, the Sigma Chi House, where I lived, and importantly, the physical geography classroom in Collins Hall, where Professor Al Berglund could be found. Al and I have slightly different memory of my first involvement. He says that uh, several of us, including Hartzell, Braff, and myself, came to him and asked him to be our coach and faculty representative. My memory is that after class one day, he stopped me and said, hey, I've heard that you played soccer for Palo Alto High School. Well, with that, I was in. Then I found three good candidates in the SIG house that could be part of that team. Tom Angelo, whose prior most important athletic event at Willamette had been to be on Rally Squad. Tony Fadden, a junior from Martinez, and John Harnish, a junior who transferred from Wheaton College and could actually play the game. But Tom Angelo deserves to be singled out for purposes of this ceremony. Tom passed away on September 3rd, 2020, but his spirit still abides for those of us who knew him. He was indeed our spiritual captain, and he, everyone knows, can testify to the amazing character and personality of the man. He was our most valuable player, although he hadn't even played the game before 1967. He loved to refer to himself as Pelé. He was the soul of the central defense. He was always muddier than anybody else. And Steve Raff, Bill Labov, and Denny Cole could definitely tell more stories about that defense. Importantly, it was Tom years later who took it upon himself to begin a campaign for the team's induction in the Willamette Hall of Fame. He was passionate and you didn't want to get him started on that subject. He was our strongest advocate. <clears throat> Two weeks before Tom died, I had an email exchange with him. I sent him an old picture of him, Mike Stebbins and Al Berglund. And I asked him, would you vote for these guys into the Hall of Fame? His response was classic Angelo, quick and immediate. As long as there's no background check, he said. So for Tom and in his memory and for all of us who knew him, I will paraphrase Walt Whitman and as follows, 
O Captain, my Captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag has flung, for you the bugle trills. Our motley crew is in the Hall of Fame. We won no championship. We hardly had any fans, but we had fun. And it remained a very, very important part of our individual and collective experience at Willamette University. So thank you, Athletic Department, for inducting the 1967-68 soccer team into the Hall of Fame. And with that, I want to turn it over to Al Berglund, without whom none of us would be here and this ceremony wouldn't be taking place. So thank you very much. Greetings. It's an honor to appear before you today. My name is Al Berglund, and in 1967-68, I was instructor of Earth Sciences and became coach of the Willamette University soccer team. The evolution of soccer at Willamette was spontaneous and organic. There was no master plan to follow. Tony Robinson, Roy Hartzell, and Steve Garish had taken classes from me and discovered that I had played intercollegiate soccer in California in the early 60s. These students, along with Steve Rapp, Mike Bennett, and the late Tom Angelo are truly the founders of soccer at Willamette. Led by Steve Rapp, these students approached the athletic department about starting soccer at Willamette. The school's reaction was very cool. This is where Henrietta, Hank, Altoff played a key role in the formation of the soccer program. She was a great friend of mine and a strong supporter of athletic programs. She worked very hard keeping students healthy in all Willamette sports. Her close relationship with all the coaches assured that no formal opposition to the establishment of soccer developed. The students were directed to find a faculty sponsor. This is the beginning of one of the most memorable episodes in my life at Willamette. When asked by these students, I did not hesitate in offering my full support. <clears throat> Our first step was to affiliate with the Oregon Inter Intercollegiate Soccer Association, a group that I chaired in 1972 to 75 to arrange soccer matches with other schools in the area. The second challenge was to find a place to play. The, the university had no facilities to offer us. The Salem Parks and Recreation Department allowed us to use Bush Pasture Park with the understanding that no permanent fixtures were allowed. Ernie Altoff, which is Hank's husband, was instrumental in laying out the soccer field and designing the goals which had to be removed after each practice and match. The final challenge was to find, organize, and train a number of students to become members of the 1967-68 team. My coaching activity ended when I became assistant director of admissions which required a great deal of national travel. The 1967-68 team continued to run day-to-day -day operations and the program flourished. The 1991 photo of four of our original players, Steve Rapp, Mike Bennett, Steve Garish, and the late Tom Angelo, Standing in front of the new soccer scoreboard confirms the 53 years of success we achieved in establishing soccer at Willamette. Well, that concludes the 2020 induction ceremony for the Willamette University Athletic Hall of Fame. We'd like to once again congratulate all of this year's inductees for their tremendous accomplishments. We'd like to thank you for joining us for this ceremony. And I'd personally like to thank all of the people that had a hand in making this a possibility. 
We are hopeful that possibly next fall, we'll be able to join together here on campus and celebrate not only this year's inductees, but also look forward to inducting the 2021 class. I hope everyone stays safe. And as always, go Bearcats.